Let's try to weld faster. Oh, still another hole. Another hole. Ooh, we better stop. Welcome to the joy of welding, everyone. We're gonna go over a topic that I think a lot of welders try to do, but it's very difficult, and that's stick weld, thin wall, square tubing. No matter what base metal you're welding, you should try to at least have a smaller diameter thickness filler metal than the base metal thickness. You don't want your base metal to melt before the filler metal you're trying to put in. In front of me today, I have the Lincoln Sprinter 180SI. That's gonna be our machine of the choice today. I have one of my other favorite things here is my stick stinger from Outlaw Leather. However, the silly end here doesn't fit into the welding machine. There are a bunch of different adapters you can purchase to make one style connector quickly change into another. But oh wait, still not the right size. Don't worry, they make an adapter for your adapter. If you want to skip all those extra steps, you can opt to just get the proper connection for the proper machine and shove the cable in there too. We have our 332-78 18s here. I think a lot of welders are gonna start with this electrode, being that it's something that they're familiar with. While 7018 do have a lot of great perks, it's not necessarily the best for thin wall square tubing. And we'll go over that a little bit later. We have some 332nd 6013s today. And while it is a shallow penetrating rod, it's still a little bit bigger in diameter than the thickness of the 16 gauge square tubing we're gonna start with. So we've got some of these fun little easy strike rods. How cute. They're about 16th of an inch in diameter. It might be the perfect stick rod for stick welding thin wall square tubing. We're gonna start by comparing some of these different electrodes. If you think that a 1 8 60 10 is the right choice for 16 gauge tubing, you're gonna have a bad time. Nice. So just go ahead and put that away. Don't waste your time trying to run that type of rod. We'll start with the 332-7018, running a bead across this butt joint. Again, the fact that we have these two thin pieces of metal and we're welding just the edges of them together, a lot easier to blow holes than say right here in the corner of a piece of tubing. Then we'll do some 332-6013, and then we'll try our little princess rod here. We're gonna start our machine about 75 amps, a pretty conservative number. Stick right away. This is a low amperage for this rod. Got it lit. Let's go ahead and try to carry this puddle. Oh, immediate blowing a big hole into this material. It's very thin, very, very thin. 7018 that likes to develop that little bit of slag on the end of the rod also makes it a pretty challenging rod to relight. Let's try to weld faster. Oh, still another hole. Another hole. Ooh, we better stop. We got a lot of holes here. But let's not give up on our good old friend, the 7018, just yet. Let's try it one more time, but turn down the amperage. 60 amps, this is probably the lowest I'd try to run this rod at. It really doesn't like to be operated this cold. What's up? Oh, we're lit, we're going. Looks like we can handle it. Ooh. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Towards the end where that heat really built up, pretty gnarly. Let's see if we can fix some of these holes at least. Before we just breeze on past the fact that a 7018 is a miserable rod for this job, what we're gonna end up doing is taking this 332 rod, taking the flux off and making a second pass. Coming at those holes, filling them in, because at this point, a weld is a weld and it's just gonna be there, you know? Just gonna kinda take that other rod and run your arc up that rod instead of letting it hit your base metal. And you'll just let that metal fall into your holes. It's not gonna be the prettiest weld you ever made. At least those little holes are gone. Well, gee whiz, I don't know if those are the happiest little welds that I've seen. They're pretty ugly. At the end of the day, this isn't very thick material, so it'll probably hold just fine. Now this is more like along the lines of a grinder and paint will make you the welder you ain't, but a little bit of blending, and you may not see those, maybe just a little bit of schmutz. Let's switch to a better rod option. We're gonna keep these 60 amps, and we're gonna switch to a 6013 and make the same joint. It's a shallow penetrating rod, so I'm hoping at 60 amps, we should see better results than the 7018. Oh yeah. A little push angle will help me see a little bit better. A little bit of push angle will also help with that heat too. That right there made for a lot easier a weld than that 7018. Let's give this a quick jimmy. 
a little bit of a crater there at the end, a little crater hole, but overall we see a nice uniform bead. It doesn't look near as bad or as sloppy as that 7018 did. Now let's take our mystical and magical little 16th inch diameter electrode. I'm really expecting to see wonderful things out of this little guy. We're going to go ahead and turn this machine down from 60 to about 40. This rod is really thin and one of that benefits is it's able to melt at a much lower amperage. Oh. Little taps good. It's just like manipulating a tiny puddle. I did blow a little hole there, which is crazy. Can adjust my speed. And now I've got a really good idea of how that rod will weld. Whenever we start to get a hole when we weld, don't stop, just keep welding. I really like the bead size. I can see I was going a little too slow there, but I'm sure with this tiny rod, it wouldn't take too much effort to just Patch that right up. Wow, oh, that was really easy. When it comes to stick welding, the electro choice is an extremely valuable consideration. Now that we know what rod we want to use, I think I want to use the 6013-332 rod. The next thing we want to consider is how these tubings are all fit up. Sometimes they're edge to edge like those miter cuts are, compared to say this joint here where the edge of it is hitting the corner of the other tube. This joint can hold a lot of heat, but you've got to know where to put it. I'd like to put my heat right on the corner of that tubing, knowing that the edge of that tubing isn't going to hold as much, but is much easier to tie into. Same thing with these joints. I can weld this flat horizontal, and in this edge, if I have to weld it either up or downhill, I'm gonna try to do it downhill. So depending on how the joint is fit up, inside corner, outside corner joints, butt joints, these little edge joints, know where to put your rod and know which way to drag it. Again, probably the most, one of the most frustrating parts about stick welding is that a rod always being wanting to stick. I'm gonna focus on the corner of the tube where most of that heat will allow. Just let the edge of our puddle hit that other piece of tubing. It's okay guys, if we're leaving some holes, we're not gonna stop and check up. I'm just gonna see where that weld kind of fell off. Start back there again. Get our puddle to light back up. Come back down. I'm gonna really change my rod angle here for this downhill weld. This rod does not like that. For the sake of experimenting, let's try with our smaller diameter electrode. Seems to want to work downhill a little bit nicer than the other rod. Yeah, that works a lot better. I think maybe I should stay away from these bigger electrodes as they're just not making my life any easier on this. This one in a flat position. Just really hugging that corner. Yeah, this is the weld that I'm looking for here. Oh yeah. I see that it is chasing that other edge of the tubing. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of pressure. Now let's try this downhill section. See how it performs. And if I can get the edges, if I can get those toes tied in, it, it does seem to work just fine going down. It does take a little bit of a little bit of a start to get the edges going. Let's take a little, another look at that. Now looking at this first side with the 6013, I really made a mess of things. I left a hole on that tubing, so I had to go back and forth on that with a couple welds, more than one, but I still left a little bit of undercut. 6013 going downhill just didn't like that. The slag rolled. Don't want that slag to roll. Can't see anything. We see a lot more lack of fusion, and we see that here on the weld. When I'm switching to the old easy strike, a little different story here. The weld was a little bit easier to control on this section here. I like the way that looks. A little bit of an undercut right there, but I think something that I would still be proud and show mom. While I was on the downhill section, I got a couple little spots of incomplete fusion, but I think with just a little bit more practice, I would sure enough become a square tube weller. Those easy strikes are really probably the option for this thin wall tubing. Let's just see, just for fun, what it looks like if we try to do some uphill welding with this rod. Here we go, here goes the uphill try. I can already tell you how this is gonna turn out. Well, at least it's uniform. 
so bumpy and humpy and in between every bump and hump we have a, a nice little hole there just allows that tubing to breathe so when it comes to thin tubing don't even bother trying to go uphill now i know that there are some of you out there that had the fight of your life thinking that you were going to build a simple easy project out of some thin gauge tubing and you were just going to stick weld it. While you can go about doing that, you can see that you need to take some extra precautions. And even with a smaller electrode in the right settings, and even still trying to follow some of those tips, you still occasionally come up with the hole. If you're designing it and you can over-engineer it, going up in wall thickness is certainly going to help you. And now you'll be able to run your favorite 7018 332 on pretty much all of these weld joints. Even these pesky outside corners you can still probably tackle in this horizontal position or downhill. Matter of fact, the same weld that we had a, such a hard time with 7018 at 60 amps, we'll turn it up to 80 amps to make this butt weld right here on the horizontal. We can just cook with it, no problems. You can even kind of hear it growling a little bit as I know it's getting complete joint penetration. But that thicker eighth inch wall really does hold everything a lot more sturdy and you're able to put some nice welds on there without worrying about blowing holes. So much so that we can even do an uphill weld. We might have to turn down our amperage just a little bit. I don't know, 60, 69, not that perfect amperage. Because that material thickness is so much thicker, and I know what part of the joint to focus on, I can accomplish these vertical welds now with even a rod such as the 7018. Whereas something on that 16 gauge material, I would not dare try, as it would be a waste of time. But nothing's really a waste of time, is it? Because even though we fail, we still learn. Let's try this on the downhill outside corner. I've done this a time or two in my day, and you weld those other three sides. And with that downhill side there after a little cleaning, nobody's the wiser. We can even have these gaps here inside of our joints and do that same technique and bust up a filler rod and get at some of these bigger gaps where that tubing has a funny little shape to the joint configuration. Just pushing a little bit of that filler metal in. It's it's just a little bit of extra reassurance. You may not need it, but it's nice to know it's there. We haven't had to do anything different with this tubing. We don't have to weld it anything special. We have just our 7018 332 rod, which is technically in our rules of being smaller in diameter than the thickness of wall tubing. So of course we can weld downhill, uphill, through gaps, butt welds, and even these fillet welds in the 2F position. All of these welds just become significantly easier as we go up a material thickness. So if you can stand to have a little bit thicker metal and you can pay for it, not only will it be easier to fabricate, easier to weld, even be just a little bit stronger. I hope you guys understood the moral of today's episode, and that is if you're trying to stick weld thin gauge square tubing, don't. I'm just kidding. It is a pain in the butt, but if we always follow the rule of having a smaller diameter filler material than the thickness of base metal that we have, it will set us up for the most success. We can tell if we're welding thinner material, having that smaller electrode made the world a difference. And if we wanted to use a bigger electrode like that 332 7018, that eighth inch Thick wall thickness on that square tubing made a world of difference and we could weld it however we please. If you want to check out some of the gear that we use like the Ariat FR or maybe you like that Outlaw Leather Stinger or maybe you want to learn more about that Lincoln Electric Sprinter, we have all those links down below in our description. Thanks again for watching. The joy of welding everyone. We'll see you on the next weld. It'll be easier to fabricate, easier to weld, but it'll even be just a little bit stronger. Just make sure you Put yourself, I don't know, get yourself in the gym. I don't know. It's going to be heavy, but it's going to be better. <laughs>